For this recipe, you're going to need 0.177 liters of unsalted butter and granulated sugar, 0.354 liters of cake flour, 1 half teaspoon of baking powder, 1 fourth teaspoon of coarse salt, 3 large eggs and 2 large egg yolks, 1 teaspoon of pure vanilla, and 2 tablespoons of lemon juice and zest. Oh hi, I didn't see you there. Oh this, this is just the joy of cooking. You know, everyone in the world eats, but there are different foods that make the cultures different. For example, today we are going to be traveling to France to try some French pastries, more specifically, the Madeleine. Now the, before we start cooking the Madeleine, let's go over some history first. Now the Madeleine was originally an 18th century dish that bakers were paid top dollar for, and it was said that the nuns would give the bakers these recipes. Another legend is also from the 18th century of a girl named Madeleine who would give the oval shaped cookies as a gift to the deposed Polish king, and that's how the name Madeleine came from. Now, I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh, that's right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I introduce you to Kermit the Frog. Yeah! Hey, Kermit, today we're going to be cooking French food. Yeah! Hey, Kermit, how do you feel about Madeleines? Yeah! Now, before we can even cook, we have to preheat the oven to 204 degrees Celsius. Now, this is the reason we have to do this is because the specific heat capacity of this oven is much higher than, say, that of butter. The specific, the specific heat capacity of butter is only 0.3 kcal per kilogram squared. And what we're going to do with this melted butter is we're just going to get a paper towel, and we're going to get it on a paper towel and rub the pan with the butter. That way, when we cook the madelines, they won't stick to the pan. The tip here is we took that 1 4 teaspoon of salt, that one half teaspoon of baking powder, and those 0.177 liters of cake flour. And what we did was, is we sifted them, taking out all the dense particles and making it more uniform. Now we just added sugar and salt to this. Ah, uh, sugar and salt. I remember when I was just a lad in ninth grade, when we worked with sugar and salt in Mr. Raya's class. Taylor, do you know how salt crystals are formed? Why, yes, Mr. Raya. They are formed when chlorine and sodium atoms are dissolved in water, and then when the water evaporates, they rebond, forming crystals. You're the best student ever. Here's a money necklace. Yeah. Uh, such good times. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix this mixture that we just put in here. We're gonna lock it, and we're gonna mix it. What do I do now? Now after we mix this for about five minutes, what we're going to do is put this butter and we're just going to put it in to our mixture. And now what we're going to do is just mix it again on medium high. Now what we're going to do now is mix our dry sifted ingredients and mix it into our wet ingredients. Now what we're going to do is use this spatula to kind of fold it and just work it in. So we're just going to pour this in that baking soda, salt, and mostly flour. Now I'm just gonna fold it, mixing the wet and dry ingredients. So what we did is we took our mixture and we let it sit for about 30 minutes. And then what we did is we filled the madeleine trays about three fourths of the way full. And then we put it in the oven that's preheated to about 204 degrees Celsius. As you can see, they're pretty much almost done. But the madeleine trays are either made out of one or two materials, either non-reactive metals or reactive metals. Reactive metals consist of coppers and irons, and have their benefits and their drawbacks. One of their benefits is that they cook the food evenly. They conduct heat very well, and they cook it evenly, and it's really fast. But what they don't do is they don't leave the chemical structure of the food itself alone. So when you're cooking things such as acids and alkalines, it makes it almost like a metallic type of taste. But what non-reactive metals do is they leave the chemical structure of the food alone. So you don't leave, so you're not tasting something that you don't want to taste. And it also, but what it doesn't do is it doesn't cook the food evenly. So you're left with some hot spots. It's not, it's not really cooked evenly, and it doesn't conduct electricity. It doesn't conduct uh, heat very well. So as you can see, the metal lines are done. 
And what we have here is a finished product. Now I'm just gonna try one for myself. Mmm. Perfect. What do you think? Thank you for joining us today in Kermit's Kitchen, where we've made some delicious lemon madelines. Bon appetit, I'm Chef Taylor, and au revoir. Say goodbye, Kermit. Yeah! Yeah!